Hey guys, in previous lecture we have seen the concept of nodal analysis, mesh analysis and telegance theorem and in this lecture we will be discussing about some problem based on nodal mesh, KCL, KVL, source transformation that is whatever we have studied till now we will solve some problem based on that. Also we will look the concept of super node and super mesh. Okay. Let's proceed to first problem. You have to find the current i1, i2, i3 and i4 in each branch. So please pause this video and solve with your own method. After that, see my method what I am doing. Then only you would be able to learn and analyze your mistakes. Okay. Now see. If you apply KCL at this point, then you will get at this point minus 2 the like outgoing current I am taking as a positive so 2 plus 3 is equal to 0 5 is equal to 0 means KCL violates circuit is not possible similarly if you will apply KCL at here in this question then you will get 2 plus 2 is equal to 0 4 is equal to 0 again KCL violates now see if you will apply KVL here in the outer loop you will get plus 5 then you will move to minus 10 is equal to 0 minus 5 is equal to 0 KVL violets so circuit not possible if you will apply KVL here then you will get minus 10 minus 10 is equal to 0 minus 20 is equal to 0 again KVL violets so we can conclude that two ideal current source connected in series only if they are of same magnitude and same direction otherwise KCL violates and circuit is not possible similarly two ideal voltage source connected in parallel only if they are of equal magnitude and same polarity for example in place of minus to plus if I will make plus to minus okay and having 10 volt same and also having same polarity then like if you will write then you will get minus 10 plus 10 equal to 0 so KVL satisfied similarly two ideal current source connected in series only if they are of same magnitude and direction if I will change the direction of this 2 ampere current source like this and having the magnitude same then I2 you will get 2 ampere because KCL is possible in this circuit okay let's move to second problem in this problem an ideal ammeter is connected between A and B and we have to find the current reading suppose one ideal ammeter this is ammeter is connected in across a and b and we have to find the current flowing through this ammeter take one note an ideal ammeter has zero internal resistance an ideal current source has infinite internal resistance please don't don't get confused between ammeter and current source okay ammeter may is an instrument which is used to measure the current while current source is the uh, is an active element which delivers power to the circuit okay don't get confused ideal ammeter has zero in internal resistance and ideal current source has infinite inter internal resistance similarly ideal voltmeter is an instrument which is used to find the voltage across any branch but I ideal voltage source is the active element which is used to transfer power got it note it down now we know that an ideal ammeter has zero internal resistance zero internal internal resistance means it it is replaced by short circuit okay and we have to find the current across this branch see now now this ab branch is short circuited means this 6 ohm is of no use okay so the circuit will be like this
now the circuit will be like this now you can apply nodal mesh but i will apply here on short formula let us suppose this is r2 and this is r1 then this circuit can be replaced by and let us suppose this is v v into r2 by r1 plus r2 in series with r1 parallel with r2 this much circuit is replaced by this equivalent circuit now you connect 6 ohm resistor and find current i this is not the shortcut this is source transformation like first i have applied voltage uh, i have transformed the voltage source into current source and then again uh, take the parallel combination of r1 r2 and then I, again i convert current source into voltage source so then you will get this so finally the circuit will be 9.6 into 6 by 12 that is equal to 4.8 volt according to this formula okay and 6 parallel with 6 you will get 3 ohm and you have to find current i i is equal to 4.8 by 9 ampere let us take this problem you have to find the current id in the diode here i will use the previous shortcut method which we have seen i will first i will reduce the circuit like i will find the voltage across r2 that is given by 10 multiplied by 4 by 4 plus 4 then i will take in series with 4 parallel with 4 here is diode and i will apply source transformation for this this is practical current source i will replace it by practical voltage source and the direct polarity of voltage source will be minus to plus because current direction is upward and the value is given by 2 multiplied by 1 that is 2 volt and 1 then i will use the equivalent circuit of this this is given by 5 volt so finally you will get circuit like this now from this circuit you can easily say that this diode is in forward biased okay so it will conduct and current id is given by 3 by 3 is equal to 1 ampere let's move to this problem i am again telling you please pause the video and solve this problem by your own and then see my solution okay then only you can able to analyze where you are doing the mistakes now see this circuit this this is like a wheat stone bridge and also it is balanced like this is balanced wheat stone bridge how let us take this is r1 this is r2 r3 r4 if r1 by r2 is equal to r4 by r3 then bridge is balanced so in this condition the bridge is balanced means the current flowing through this branch will be zero so therefore it it will be replaced by open circuited now you can easily find r equivalent r equivalent is equal to this four in series with this four that is equal to eight and this eight is parallel with this four that is equal to 32 by 12 ohm see this circuit this is infinite circuit okay it is moving to infinite so and i have to find the this r in so i will take let r in is equal to x i will take r in is equal to x so if i will remove this much branch from infinite series then will it affect the uh, resistance no it will not affect because this is going to infinite so i will remove this much and then also you will get r in only because i am take, taking out this branch from infinite then also infinite minus something is equal to infinite only okay 
so this is x having 1 1 ohm end resistance and finally I can write this much as a R in and R in is equal to x now you will solve x is equal to x multiplied by 1 by x plus 1 plus 1 you will get x plus x plus 1 by x plus 1 finally x square plus x is equal to 2x plus 1 x square minus x minus 1 is equal to 0 and finally x is equal to 1.618 ohm in this question you have to find the value of current see this is also a balanced wheat, wheat stone breeze like 6 by 3 is equal to 6 by 3 ok similarly 3 by 2 is equal to 3 by 2 means this 5 ohm resistance is of not no use so it will be open circuited now find current i now the circuit will look like 12 in parallel with 6 in parallel with 4 we have to find current i you will get i is equal to 6 ampere now let us solve this problem see in this problem first we will make this circuit in a linear way i have already told you make this as a one okay that means and two a b is given and this will be the two now find make this circuit in a linear way a 1 this is 2 and this is b ok now move to a from a to 1 1 capacitor is there of 1 farad 1 to b there is 1 capacitor of 1 farad b to 2 one capacitor sorry a to 1 is 2 farad capacitor and a to b is also 2 farad capacitor b to 2 is 1 farad capacitor a to b is 1 farad ca capacitor sorry 2 farad capacitor and 1 and 2 are short circuited see this 1 and 2 are short circuited anything is left yes a to 2 is also 1 farad capacitor so this circuit is same as got it this is a this is b these two farad and one farad are in parallel and similarly this two farad and one farad in parallel and again parallel with 2 farad so the parallel combination of 2 and 1 will give 3 and 3 in series that is 1.5 and 2 finally you will get CAV is equal to 3.5 farad see in this question we can apply KCL here because KCL is independent of nature of element we have already discussed about this this is uh, this is active element also non-linear time variant however the inductor and resistor are passive element so KCL is independent of nature of element IR is given as 3 e to the power minus 40 plus 4 e to the power minus 3t and IL of 0 is given as 1 ampere and we have to find theta ok apply KCL you will get minus 12 cos omega t minus theta minus i l plus i r is equal to 0 so 12 cos omega t minus theta is equal to i r minus i l see i l of 0 is equal to 1 ampere means at 
t is equal to 0 12 cos theta is equal to i r at t is equal to 0 you will get 7 minus 1 is equal to 6 theta is equal to cos inverse 1 by 2 that you will get 60 degree let us see this problem this problem consists of two independent sources and one dependent sources this is dependent sources and this is independent sources and we have to find ix so take this node as a okay and apply nodal here take node at higher potential okay so if you will take no this node as at a higher potential then you can apply nodal equation like this va minus 10 by 2 this 3 ampere is entering that means minus 3 plus va minus 2 ix by 1 is equal to 0 now see we can replace ix in terms of va and 10 volt suppose this is my 2 ohm this is 10 volt and this is va and this is ix so ix is equal to 10 minus va upon 2 we can write ix is equal to 10 minus va upon 2 hence va minus 10 upon 2 minus 3 plus va minus 10 minus va upon 1 is equal to 0 va take va common 1 by 2 plus 1 plus 1 is equal to 13 plus 5 5 va by 2 is equal to 18 va is equal to 36 by 5 now put va in this equation you will get ix okay this is gate 2012 problem and in this circuit we have to find v p q here we can apply nodal equation so at p at node p we will apply first nodal equation so i will take p at a higher potential so vp upon 8 this is at 10 volt because 10 volt is directly connected with reference voltage so this is 10 volt vp minus 10 by 2 and this this has 2 ampere of current that is constant and it is outgoing so plus 2 is equal to 0 I will get VP is equal to 4.8 volt similarly I will apply nodal at Q I will assume Q at higher potential and then I will apply VQ minus 10 by 4 plus VQ by 6 and this 2 ampere is entering and entering current I am taking as a negative minus 2 is equal to 0 so you will get vq is equal to 10.8 volt so vpq is equal to vp minus vq 4.8 minus 10.8 that is equal to minus 6 volt now see this problem you have to find v1 and v2 okay here if you will apply nodal equation then you will get minus 1 plus v1 by 1 by 2 but what about this how will you write kcl at here you don't know the current flowing in ideal voltage source this is the ideal voltage source so you don't know the how much current is flowing in ideal voltage source so you can't apply directly nodal method so here is the concept of super node okay so when there is an ideal voltage source present in between two nodes then super node concept are used.
okay so what we are doing in super node we are replacing this 5 voltage source like this this is 1 ampere current source this is v1 okay this is v2 and this is 9 ampere current source okay and we are assuming that it is connected such that v1 is not equal to v2 okay now apply nodal equation what i will get at node 1 comma 2 we have to apply nodal equation at 1 and 2 both so i will get minus 1 this is my 1 by 2 this is 1 by 6 plus v1 by 1 by 2 plus v2 by 1 by 6 minus 9 is equal to 0 so i will get 2 v1 plus 6 v2 is equal to 13 so you got one equation now this is equation linear equation in two variable okay so to find the v1 v2 you need one more equation so inside the super node always apply kvl means this is at v1 okay this is 5 volt and this is v2 plus minus plus minus now apply kvl in this you will get minus v1 plus 5 plus v2 is equal to 0 so v1 minus v2 is equal to 5 this is your second equation solving first and second you will get v1 is equal to 5.375 volt and v2 is equal to 0.37 5 volt this is known as super node concept in super node concept when there is an ideal voltage source present in between two nodes then we can't apply nodal equation because we don't know how much amount of current is flowing through ideal voltage source okay so what i will do we will apply super node concept and in this concept what we are doing we replace this 5 voltage so 5 volt source and apply the nodal equation at one and two node simultaneously and we get one equation after that inside the super node we apply kvl like this and we get second equation and solving first and second we get v1 and v2 now see this circuit we have to find i1 i2 and i3 we can find by using mesh analysis mesh analysis is done when you know the voltage across each branch like 1 ohm across the voltage across 1 ohm you know similarly the voltage across 2 ohm you know then only you can apply mesh analysis but you don't know the voltage across an ideal current source see here an ideal current source is present so you don't know how much voltage across will be there so you can't apply mesh directly so you have we have to use the super mesh concept in super mesh concept what we are doing we are combining mesh 1 and 2 in a single equation like this is my mesh 1 and this is my mesh 2 okay so we combine mesh 1 and mesh 2 in single equation and then we apply kvl now apply kvl i will move from here okay when i will move from here then i will get first minus 7 this is minus minus 7 after it when i go further then i will get 1 ohm resistor and the voltage across 1 ohm resistor will be like this and the current flowing through this 1 ohm resistor is i1 as well as i3 okay i1 is downward direction i3 is in upward direction as uh, since we are applying mesh in first and third loop so always i will take i1 and i3 greater than i2 so 
across the voltage drop across one ohm resistor will be I1 minus I2. Okay. After we will move further, then I will see 3 ohm resistor, and in 3 ohm resistor, the current will be I3 minus I2. I3 minus I2. We will take I1 and I3 greater than I2 because we are applying mesh equation in I1 and I3. Okay. Then I will move further. I will get I3 is equal to 0. Solving this equation, I will get I1 minus 4 I2 plus 4 I3 is equal to 7. This is first equation. Now I will apply mesh in third, third one. What I will get 2 I2 then 3 I2 minus I3 then 1 I2 minus I1 is equal to 0. So I will get I1 minus 6 I2 plus I3 is equal to 0. So I get two equation since there are three variable. So we can't find all the three variable by using two equations. So I need one equation also one equation more. So which I will get from here like this is my 7 ampere current source and i3 is flowing like this and i1 is flowing like this so we can write i1 minus i3 is equal to 7 ampere this is my third equation solving first second and third you will get I1, I2 and I3. Okay. In this way, super mesh concept are used. Got it? That's all about this lecture. In the next tutorial, we will see network theorem in which we will see superposition theorem in detail and homogeneity principle and we'll solve some problem based on superposition theorem. If you guys are having doubt, then put it in the comment below. And for problem solving, you can join our Facebook group for new updates, please subscribe to this channel. Thank you.